Hey folks, Jim Thomas here, Fitness Management and Consulting, and welcome to our channel today. I appreciate you being here, and welcome back to all of our subscribers. It's good to have you, and if you're someone who's new to the channel, if this is your first time here, you know, please hit the subscribe button, please hit the like button, and to all, you know, please consider becoming a member uh, to receive more information, you know, sent directly to your inbox on how to grow and develop your business, and to learn more about me and my company, you know, please check out the links below. Now, with that said, let's get into our topic today. And what I want to give you is six ways to potentially correct a failing marketing strategy. Six ways to correct a failing marketing strategy or what you think might be a failing marketing strategy. So let's get into it. Let's, I'm going to talk about number one. And the first way to correct it is maybe still give it some time. Okay, I want you to think about something in terms of your marketing strategy. Usually when we think about it is, as you've all heard me say, you know, the marketing strategy, hey, why do we do it? You know, we want the door to swing, we want the phone to ring, the email to ding, and the text to ping, right? We want traffic, okay? If you're not getting that, okay, oops, this is a failing strategy for us, okay? But I want you to think about some other things as to, in terms of why you still want to give this some time. Uh, some other reasons that your marketing is important. A, it keeps you in front of your existing members. Because if your existing members aren't seeing your marketing, whose marketing are they seeing? They're seeing your competitors. And this can have an adverse effect you know, on your club retention. So your members are still going to be seeing this. So even though you may not be getting some results you want, you might be getting that one. Take a look at that. Is that a possibility? Uh, number two, you know, this is a great way to keep your competition back on their heels. Okay. You know, if you're constantly promoting and pushing out information about your facility and they're not, you know, they're scrambling, you know, looking for, you know, different ways to get things done. And then the other thing I would comment on when it comes to marketing, you know, this is a great way to really support uh, and stand behind, you know, a loyal, dedicated sales team, you know, so they don't feel like they're kind of hung out to dry and it's all on them. So there's some different things we want to look at. So sometimes let's give it some time. Okay. Let's make sure we're tracking. And so we actually know how many calls are we getting? Okay. Are we getting them set in an appropriate manner? Are they showing up? Are they buying? What kind of programs are they buying? Know your key performance indicators in there because that will start to tell you some things because A, maybe it's working better than we think, but we're, for some reason, maybe we're not trained as well in, in how to set it or how to sell it. Or maybe we made it too difficult to do that. So there's a few things in there. So do give it some time. Don't just you know, end it immediately. Uh, number two, you know, differentiate. You know, one of the things that I see frequently in marketing is, hey, join now. Zero enrollment. I mean, how common is that? And I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's pretty common. You know, do something different you know, differentiate it. I know when I was marketing, when I owned my clubs, you know, my big thing was two free weeks. Everybody got two free weeks because what happens when you market membership for sale, then again, nothing wrong with it. We, do, we still do it and do it a lot. But the problem with that, really what you're doing is you're extracting from the audience who's interested. That's going to be a much smaller number than who's potentially interested to get two free weeks, you know, try it out, then decide, Okay, you're going to get a lot more volume, but you have to be better at booking the, the, the appointment. You have to be better at sales process. Whereas if we're just extracting the member out of the audience, you know, it's not quite as difficult. So look at, you know, some differentiation. Don't just do kind of what everybody else is doing. You know, that's one of the common things I hear, particularly when we're doing uh, kind of business planning and things of like that for, for new facilities. Well, what made you come up with this idea? Oh, well, so-and-so down the street's doing it. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean it's working. <laughs> okay. Um, number three, make a more valuable offer. So when you're doing your marketing, make a more valuable offer. What's going to create value to your customer? And you take the same idea I just gave you, you know, two free weeks mini membership. Try us out, then decide. Is that a valuable offer to somebody? Could be. Okay. Maybe they're not sure they want to become a member. Maybe not, they're not sure they can afford it. Maybe they're not sure that they're going to like it. Maybe they're not sure they're going to use it. Maybe they're not sure they have time. 
they get two free weeks to try it out, then decide. That could be a pretty valuable offer to somebody like that, okay? So look at having more valuable offers. And what I would say on this too is give as much as you can, okay? There's a tendency, tendency sometimes, well, I don't wanna do that much. I don't wanna do that much. Give as much as you can. The more you give, the more you're gonna get back. It's really that simple, okay? So look at making a more valuable offer and get creative with it. There's an awful lot of things that can be done there. Uh, number four on correcting a failing marketing strategy is retarget to fit your audience. And so here's what I mean. You know, what I see in a lot of marketing strategies, it's more of a generalized approach. You know, hey, come on in and join. Okay, you know, decide who is your audience? Who are you trying to attract, at least with this particular piece, this, this particular marketing piece? Who are you trying to attract? Okay. You know, maybe it's a, a deconditioned audience. Maybe you're trying to attract someone who's not exercised in at least a year and they want to lose 25 pounds. That's a much different person than if it's a, you know, a young athlete that you're trying to attract. It's much different. Okay. And so retarget to fit your audience. Make sure you know who you're talking to in that ad. Make sure you know who you're talking to. And that can be a great way to kind of, you know, really make some adjustments in your marketing to get the results that you're looking for. So if you're looking for folks that, you know, want to lose weight, have an exercise in a year, here's one message. If it's, you know, young athletes that are trying to improve performance, that's a different message. Okay. Know who your audience is. Know who you're going after. Uh, now, number five. It, you know, and this is common. We want to, uh, we want to experiment and we want to test. Okay, and that, I think anybody in marketing would tell you that, that that's what you want to do. Now, but here's what I want to maybe adjust on that just a bit. You know, when I get into to projects with clubs, folks that are clients of ours, okay, I do not experiment. I do not test. If we're trying to get a business back on track, if we're trying to take them to that next level, they're struggling. I don't want to experiment. I don't want to test. I'm going to do what has a proven history of success period. I want to do things that have a track record. And so you need to do your research on this. You know, what really has a track record just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean it necessarily works. You know, when you get into this experiment and testing, now, once you're up and going now, let's try some things. Let's see what we can do. Now, here's also another idea that you can try on this because, you know, testing and experimenting is a good thing. You'll stumble on things sometimes that, oh, wow, that sure worked well. You know, consider barter, you know, consider trade out, you know, when you get all your junk mail in, I've had, you know, employees do this in the past, so they'll bring me all their junk mail. I'll just be stacks and stacks of stuff. And I'll sit down and call every single one of them. And I'll let them know that, Hey, I, I saw your piece. I love what you're doing. I'd love to participate, but my budget's full right now. You know, would you consider a trade out? I could give you a membership or two or three that you could use for yourself, use for family, uh, give to good clients, you know, use it as employee contest. However, in exchange for some marketing. And if we find that it works, hey, we'll continue on. And those are good ways to test because this is not going to cost you anything. So that could be a way you could do that. Okay. So testing, experimenting, this is important. It is good. Let's just make sure that, you know, our costs are where they need to be, particularly if you're in a situation where you're struggling, that's really not the time to be, to be testing. And then, and finally, uh, number six is, uh, you know, pick a new strategy, pick a new strategy. I can give you an example when it comes to picking a new strategy that I see fairly common. You know, a lot of folks that I talk to, they become frustrating, frustrated with social media marketing. Okay. They find it to be very expensive. They don't get the results they want. Uh, they might get a lot of traffic, but they're not closing lots of sales. And so we'll change the strategy. And so maybe instead of doing social media marketing or, you know, Facebook marketing or something like that, maybe we put our money into, you know, Google ads, pay-per-click. Okay. And the reason that works so well, usually is because with Google ads, with pay-per-click, when people want to buy something, I mean, what do you do when you want to buy something? You know, we Google it, okay? And we're ready to buy. I mean, years ago, it used to be the yellow pages a person went to, you know, not so much anymore. Now they go to Google and they're ready to buy and they go to Google, okay? And you'll have, you'll have uh, your customers that reply to you are, are much more ready, you know, to make that purchase. So that could be a new strategy, you know, that you could, you could utilize. 
you know, um, boys, what, a couple years back, you know, what was the big thing? The, um, uh, the, 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 was it six week, the nine week, um, you know, body transformation programs and things like that that were, that were happening. And a lot of folks got great, um, um, traffic flow from it. They got a lot of people responding, but it wasn't really a program for many folks. It was a good conversion. They didn't do, didn't, uh, they struggled with the conversion of it. And so sometimes we have to change our strategy because what we don't want to do, we don't want to set our salespeople up for failure. You know, we can almost always get people in. We, we do enough, you know, kind of crazy stuff. We can get the phone to ring, get people to come in. We also want to make sure we can convert this into a sale. That's why, like when I said earlier on that two free weeks, you know, for some folks, that's not going to work because your sales staff is not really prepared to sell that. Okay. And so maybe not a good idea. We need to do other things that warm it up. But for a sales staff that is, you know, finely tuned, that can be a home run for you. I mean, I can give you an example in my clubs. We used to have a whole phone room that we used and we gave away two free weeks and we would sign up a hundred people a month per club that came in for that two free weeks. Now we were only closing about 50%, but it's going to be lower, but our volume was so high that we had success with it, but we trained on it and we had real strategies for it and things of that nature. So if, if your marketing is not working like you want, take a look at these six things that maybe you can do to correct it. Okay. And help get it back on track. Because at the end of the day, what we do know, we need the phone to ring, the door to, door to swing, email the ding, and the text to ping, right? And so, folks, my name is Jim Thomas. My company is Fitness Management and Consulting. You can learn more about me with the links below. And then if you've uh, not yet subscribed, you know, please hit the subscribe button. Please hit the like button. Consider becoming a member. And we look forward to seeing you all in that next video.